Okay, I want to add my welcome to Mr. Niels. We're happy to see all of you back. Welcome back. Looking forward to uh, the rest of this school year. So the topic's about exercise today. And uh, they say that the first thing that you hear and the last thing that you hear is what you remember. And you might forget stuff that's in the middle. So I want to start out with the following. Uh, three things, three things. The first one's about general health. If you have good health, you will feel good. You will feel good. If you don't have good health, eventually you will feel very bad. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing about exercise, you need to do three things about exercise. One is you need to have an exercise. <laughs> you need to pick one. We're going to talk about that. Um, the second thing is you need to have a time and you need to have a place. Okay, so we'll talk about that this morning. Uh, and the third thing is you got to do it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we know the story of Elijah uh, and Ahab. Uh, God sent Elijah, he prayed, and it didn't rain for three years because of the wickedness of the land, Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And we know the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel, um, and when he faced off with the uh, prophets of Baal, uh, and fire came down from the Lord and consumed his sacrifice. We know of Elijah's prayer. Uh, he prayed seven times for the rain to come back, and on the seventh he sent his servant out to look, and his servant said, I see a small cloud in the east about the size of a man's hand. And Elijah told Ahab, get your chariot ready. It's going to rain, and we don't want that to stop you. And then the next verse says that the sky grew black with clouds, and there was rain everywhere. And then we see in 1 Kings 18.46 that the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The distance from Mount Carmel to Jezreel is 28 miles. So he did a little over a marathon, a full marathon. Now, uh, the hand of the Lord was on him. But as you read the story of Elijah, he was an outdoor man and he was very active. He had an active life. So I think he was ready for this. Um, Jesus lived an outdoor life. Everywhere he went, he walked. Uh, there were times when he, he took a boat across the Sea of Galilee. But otherwise, Jesus was walking, ministry of healing. We find out that Jesus lived largely an outdoor life. So we have these examples of exercise in the Bible. So um, in ministry of healing, page 237, and we're going to look at some spirit of prophecy uh, on exercise. She says that action is a law of our being. We were made to move. We're not made to sit still. Uh, we're told in Healthy Living, page 130, that morning exercise and walking in the free and invigorating air of heaven or cultivating flowers, small fruits and vegetables is necessary to the helpful cir circulation of the blood. It is the surest safeguard against colds, coughs, congestions of the brain and lungs, inflammation of the liver, the kidneys and the lungs, and a hundred other diseases. So a principle there, a morning exercise, that seems to be preferable. Those who accustom themselves to proper exercise in the open air will generally have good and vigorous circulation. Men and women, young and old, who desire health and who would enjoy active life whatever their business and inclinations, they should make up their minds to exercise in the open air as much as they can. Second Testimonies 5.26. And so there's another principle, and that's to exercise in the open air. Uh, let men and women work in the field and orchard and garden. This will bring health and strength to nerve and muscle. Medical Ministry 296. So certain kinds of work can serve as exercise. And finally, if those who are sick would exercise their muscles daily, women as well as men in outdoor work, using brain, bone, and muscle proportionately, 
Weakness and languor would disappear. Health would take the place of disease and strength the place of feebleness. Medical Ministry 297. So exercise can also be therapeutic. So let's look and see just a little bit of what science has to say about exercise. This study done on Harvard alumni and in uh, 1986 and in 1993, uh, as you see the graph, um, as you go up there on your right hand, that shows the relative risk of all-cause mortality, and that just means dying from any cause, from any reason. And as you follow along the bottom, it shows the more exercise that people do, uh, measured in kilocalories per week, uh, less, starts at less than 500, and goes up to over 3,500. And you can see readily that the more exercise you do, the less risk you have of dying from any cause. So exercise is health-promoting and protective. It's interesting that it seems like uh, the results were even better in 1993 than they were in 1986, and I don't know the reason for that. But you'll notice that it says down there that just 30 minutes of walking per day is associated with a 30% redu reduced risk of early death. Here's an interesting study showing the effect of body weight and physical activity on life expectancy. As you go to the far right, you see somebody at normal rate, normal weight, and then as you keep going, you see where people are overweight or they're obese or they, the class one obesity or class two obesity. Uh, the different color bars represent, you'll see the legend at the bottom, uh, the darkest one are those who meet the federal guidelines for exercise in the United States. The middle bar are those who meet half of those guidelines, and the light-colored bar are those who are inactive. And you can see that somebody with a normal weight at the very far right, if they do meet the federal guidelines uh, for exercise, they don't lose any years of life. And that's what it's showing. You see there at the far right going down the uh, scale there, it says, minus one, minus two, those are years of life that you may lose as a result of uh, the amount of exercise you do. So somebody who's a normal weight and they're doing all the, they don't lose any. If you only do half the guidelines, you might lose two years of life, two and a half years of life. And if you don't do any, follow any of the federal guidelines, you can lose uh, up to f uh, five years of life, expected years of life. Now compare that, you can go, you know, just, just to, to give you an idea of what we're what this is talking about, go over to obesity class two, to the far left, okay? And there you see that somebody who is extremely obese, but they exercise, they actually, their risk can be even a little less than those who are normal weight and don't exercise. So, uh, exercise definitely has an effect on what we do, on how we live, and how long we live. Here, I think, is an interesting um, graph of physical activity and onset delay of Alzheimer's disease, talking about dementia. And dementia is what you see older people get. Uh, as they get older, they have trouble thinking, they have trouble processing. Um, uh, you may or may not look forward to that <laughs> when you get older. Uh, some of you have family members that may be experiencing dementia, and, and it's sad, it, it's uh, not a good thing. If here we see, you see a graph with a light-colored line and a dark-colored line. The, the light-colored line represents those who exercise less than three times a week, and the dark-colored line represents those who exercise more than three times a week. And what you see here is that the, on the bottom you see the age uh, during the study. And if you exercise more than three times a week, if you're going to get dementia, you're going to get it later, several years later. And you won't get it as much as if you don't exercise. So exercise even protects against dementia. Uh, this is similar to the first study, but what they found is that um, minutes of, per week of moderate to vigorous uh, physical activity decreases your risk of disease and death. 
notice that this starts with just uh, what that measurement shows, with just uh, 30 minutes of exercise a week. Now, what is that? That's like six, seven minutes a day, right? That, you start to get an effect on your health, just exercising six to seven minutes a day. All right? And then you can see a sweet spot, you know, the curve starts to fall off, but you still get improvements, say around 120, 150 minutes a week. Now, right now, um, while you all were gone, I was getting um, 180 minutes a week. Now that you're back, I'm going to get 120 minutes a week. Okay, but I'm going to get some benefit. All right? So, this, th so because of this, uh, part, part of what we can look at, 25 minutes of brisk walking a day can add seven years to your life. Yeah. So... Uh, the American Heart Association, because of these studies, recommends that people get at least 30 minutes a day of moderate intensity exercise, five days a week, uh, and that comes out to 150 minutes a week. Or, if you do vigorous exercise, uh, you can do 25 minutes a day, three days a week for 75 minutes a week, and that gives you the same benefit. And how do you determine how, how, if your exercise is vigorous? Anybody remember? We've talked about this. What? Heart rate. Heart rate is a good way to do it. Here's another way. Um, in fact, let's start with low intensity. If you're doing low intensity exercise with somebody, you can talk to them and you can sing. If you're doing moderate intensity exercise, uh, you can talk, but you can't sing. And if you're vigorous exercise, it's really hard to talk and sing. Okay, so that's one way to, you know, decide what you're doing. Um, and then also there at the bottom, it talks about high-intensity exercise. That's resistance exercises, anaerobics, weightlifting, that sort of thing, two, three times a week. You see all these numbers? I, I want to give you a statement for exercise, okay? Get outside for an hour, five days a week, and work up a sweat. That's all you have to remember. That, that's a goal to shoot for, okay? Outside for an hour. That really takes care of a lot. You know, for health, we talked about if you're healthy, you're going to feel good. So how do you define health? I want to give you an easy definition of health. And that's the one that Ellen White has in Ministry of Healing, where she says, uh, pure air, sunlight, you know, we remember new start. Nutrition, exercise, you tell me. N, what's N for? Nutrition. What's E? What's W? What's S? What's the first T? What's A? And what's R? And what's the final T? Very good. Okay, you do that, you will have health. And what do we say about having health? What do we say about health? You will feel good. I like feeling good. Amen, yeah. Okay, so you will feel good. That's, that's, that's health. So you, if you get outside for an hour and work up a sweat, you're going to knock off exercise. What else will you knock off? Air. What else? Sunlight. Sunlight. What else? Water. Trust. Because that's a good time to talk to the Lord. Okay? So, get outside for an hour and work up a sweat. All right. An hour, a day, five days a week. That's a goal. Okay? Um, yeah, right now I'm managing to do that two days a week and then little spots and places in between, but I was doing it three days a week and it's the goal. That's what we shoot for. So what kind of exercise you do? The best exercise you can do is the exercise you do. Okay? <laughs> so there's all kinds of stuff. You can play ball, you can run, you can walk, you can swim, you can bike, you can... You just pick what you like to do and do it. Okay, now exercise and work, you know, uh, don't worry about all these numbers. Mets, they say if you do this amount of activity every week, 
you're going to meet the goals for health as science has determined by the research that's been done. So 10 minutes of climbing stairs. And we got stairs over at the cafeteria, okay? So run up and down those stairs for 10 minutes, all right? Uh, vacuuming for 15 minutes. Okay. The, the thing about some of these is you can't do them every day, okay? You know, if you're in your room or your house, you don't vacuum every day. So, so that's what you got to take into account. But running for 20 minutes, walking or cycling 25 minutes, gardening for 20 minutes. Gardening is wonderful exercise, but again, you don't do that every day unless you got a big, huge garden. Okay. Are these equivalent? Yes. So 15 minutes of vacuuming is equal to 20 minutes of running? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in terms of the Mets. It doesn't sound like it according. That's, that's what it says. Anybody need somebody to vacuum? <laughs> okay. So resistance training. Uh, and this is lifting weights, you know, but we don't always have weights to lift. So do some strength building. That, you need to do a bit of that at least. You need to keep that up. I was really, fa uh, what's the right word? I was impressed coming into a classroom the other day and finding a staff member doing push-ups. Okay, getting some fresh air, that's push-ups, that's good resistance training, that's good. Sit-ups, those are resistance training. And you need to stretch and be flexible. Okay, yeah, I guess maybe not that much, but you know, at least some, all right? Um, you can go online and you can download tables of stretching exercises. So when you're going to exercise, the recommendation is you start out with stretching and, and you do the different stretches. You're going to run, you stretch your back, you stretch your hip, stretch your knees, you know all about that. So you can do that. Do that to start. And then when you start, you want to do a warm-up. You don't get into your full exercise routine and get that heart rate right away. Do like a minute or two of warm-up, walking slowly perhaps, and then work your way up to doing your full clip and keep that up for 20, 25 minutes and then start to slow down and have a cool-off period. That's what's recommended. But you need to stretch. You need to keep your joints limber. That's very important through all our lifetime. I don't know if you've heard that sitting is the new smoking. Okay, inactivity puts your bones at risk. This is what the studies say, or the analyses. Uh, if you sit more than four hours, you increase your risk of death 50% from any cause. Okay, and 125% increased risk in cardiovascular disease if you sit for more than four hours. Anybody here sit for more than four hours? Well, stand up. Okay, stand up. Just stand up and move around, yeah. Well, we, we just started the day. <laughs> okay. All right, the mortality of sitting. Um, now, this is associated with watching television, and there may be some additional factors in there. But what you can see there, people who watch one to two hours of television a day increase their mortality by 4%. If you're watching seven hours of television a day, and apparently there's people who do that, you can increase your mortality by 61%. So you gotta find ways to not sit, okay? When you're working at your computer. I actually got one of these, and so I stand when I'm working on my computer, all right? And that's, that helps you move, because it's, it's kind of hard standing still. It's harder to stand still than it is to sit still. So stand as much as you can. There's, there are people who do even more. They put a treadmill under their computer and they're walking, okay? Um, here's something else that can be something you can do in the dorm. I don't know if you've seen these balance discs. You can get them on Amazon for $20. Um, okay, so while you're working, stand at your computer, find a way to stand. There's some desks you can buy that you can put on your desk and lift up and then put your computer on top. Or you can just find a, build a shelf or put some books or something and get one of these balance discs. And that, that does, that, that moves your muscles. It sends electrical sis, uh, signals for your body. Uh, it helps your blood vessels dilate and constrict and it's good for your body. So that's, that's another way you can look at it. Um, 
the thing about exercise, as you get older, you got to be really intentional about it. Now, here in school, you know, the program here at Wachita, they try to work exercise into your program. They have, you have work outdoors, you have work on the, on the farm. Uh, you also have fitness class for the college students, okay, which is wonderful. Okay, so that's, that's something to do and you can get. But when you get out of here and you start working, exercise is one of those things that can fall by the wayside. And the reason is uh, eating. Take eating, for example. You have to eat. If, if you skip too many meals, you're going to feel really, really bad right away. And you're going to go eat. It just drives your body. But exercise, it's easy to get through day after day after day. When, we, when my wife and I first moved up here, uh, it changed my whole exercise routine. And I actually didn't exercise for about a year. And I felt very, very bad. Okay, and uh, so you, you got to, you know, you start working, you're working eight hours, then you come home, and if you got to fix a meal, and if you got kids, you got to spend time with them, and you got to say, this is the amount of time. That's why I said on exercise, you got to have an exercise, you got to have a time, and you got to have a place. You ask my wife, I've fought all my life to make sure I get the time for exercise, and you just have to do it. So at work, you can get some other workers together and have a joint exercise thing, okay? Just, you got to figure out the way to do it. Okay, I want to close with just some personal experiences on exercise. And I've told this one before, but it makes a point that I think is really significant and important. Uh, I've mentioned that I used to work on construction. I worked on Disney World back in, in the 70s. Uh, and that was good hard work in Florida. Uh, it's, uh, that was summer work in, during college. And uh, it was over 90 degrees. Uh, the humidity was over 90%. Uh, we were working nine hours a day. And uh, it was hard work. And I felt I was young. I was strong enough. And I felt really good about that. I was, you know, enjoying it, doing good. I come home and uh, I had dirt all over me. Uh, you know, Florida's got bunches of dirt. Um, and uh, I'd take a shower and it would clog up the bathtub. And my mother said, we lived, uh, she lived by the Florida hospital at that time. There's a couple of lakes there on the grounds of the Florida hospital. She said, go jump in the lake first. Then come, you know, so you can get the dirt off and then come, come back and take your shower and, and then eat supper. So I, that's what I did. I, I went down to the lake and I started swimming across the lake. The lake was about a quarter of a mile across. Is that right? Quarter mile. And, uh, and uh, that's actually where I met my wife. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I uh, started swimming across the lake and back. So it was a half mile swim. And so I was doing that five days a week in addition to work at Disney World. Uh, I felt the difference. I felt the difference. You know, Ellen White says that people who work outdoors may not need as much exercise as, you know, as uh, other people. But I felt the difference when I started swimming than just working outdoors. So exercise makes a difference. Um, like I said, you got to find what you can do. I uh, had some injuries. I used to run. I used to do triathlons and jog, but had some surgery on my knee um, and so what has what works for me now is biking I'm glad to say I'm back to biking like I said I left it off for a year when I, we first moved up here but now a couple of days a week I get out and I bike for an hour outdoors and I can get the whole bang at the sunshine drink my water talk to the Lord it's a great time for talking to the Lord uh, when I was biking there at uh, when we lived in Louisiana, people would ask me, how's, so how's the biking? I say, it keeps me sane. It really does. Exercise makes such a difference. Um, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, it says, you know that many runners enter a race, only one of them wins the prize. So run to win. Athletes work hard to win a crown that cannot last, but we do it for a crown that will last forever. Get a program of exercise, physical exercise, and run to win. 
work hard at it, you will feel good. And the same in your spiritual life. Do the spiritual exercises every day that are so important and you will receive a crown that lasts forever. Let's kneel for prayer. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for your blessings to us. We're so thankful that everybody's back safe and with experiences where you've worked with them and helped them. And we're thankful that they were able to get plenty of exercise walking around and doing the different, uh, meeting people and witnessing for you. Father, we pray that you will be with us as we seek to improve these bodies that you have given us so that we may render a more effective service to you. Father, be with each of us today. Bless each person here today. Bless our day. And uh, we thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.